my brother priests, dear brothers, good afternoon. <clears throat> um, it's been a long time since I was able to see you as a group. Well, I've never seen you as gathered in a group like this, in a gathering like this. But uh, when I was studying in Rome, I was with the brothers. Uh, I joined them in the mission because I was studying in the University of the Holy Cross. And on Sundays, I go with them to celebrate Mass in the Filipino centers and I also joined them in the uh, vigil, the first Friday and first Saturday vigils. So I, I know some of you and others who are not here and I feel like seeing uh, old friends although for the most part, most of you uh, I have seen for the first time pala, no? Pero all of you look the same naman. So, <laughs> so it's like uh, meeting old friends again. It has been quite some time and many things have happened. No? But in the Gospel today, as well as in the first reading, you will see that God's plan may take several turns, but it always goes back to how He wanted it. Because God cannot be outdone in His ways and His plan cannot be undone. What he has said will always come to fruition. As in the case of Joseph and the 12 tribes of Israel. As you know, Joseph was sold by his brothers out of envy. Well, they wanted to kill him, but they just decided it is better to sell rather than to kill for one important reason if you sell you get something out of it you get proceeds if you kill nothing I mean, they didn't even value the life of Joseph their own brother they sold him out of envy and out of greed without any sense of mercy and yet even though this was the turn of events for Joseph God walked with him and of course Joseph was not the most obedient son he probably was also proud and vain owing to the uh, predilection his father Jacob had for him but then God has a plan not only for Joseph. You see, you might think that Joseph is the star of the show. He's just one of the persons whom God has commissioned to bring out his plans. But, you know, there's no tribe called Joseph among the twelve. Remember? Although his sons, uh, Manasseh and the other one, these are the ones who got the portion that was supposed to be for Joseph. But there's no tribe named after Joseph. You don't hear of Josephites. You have Judah, the Reubenites, and the others, but Levites, but none called after or named after Joseph because no matter if Joseph was the principal actor in this particular history of Israel 
the whole plan of God was not just for Joseph, it's for the whole of Israel, and for that matter, for the whole mankind, the whole of humanity. And that's also the same with the uh, apostles. I mean, there is a parallelism between the 12 tribes of Israel and the 12 apostles. Like the sons of Jacob, the apostles too were a mixed bag of different people. Some with baggage, others with difficult personalities, and there was one who actually betrayed the Lord. The same way that the brothers of Joseph betrayed their brother. But all of this played out into the hand of God. And all of this, all the actions, the particular actions of individuals were used by God to bring about His plan of salvation. Now, it doesn't mean that we will simply tolerate wrongdoing or we simply can't do anything that we want. After all, God will always revert everything back to His plan. Take note that for every infidelity, for every denial, for every betrayal, for every sin, there's always a setback. God will always use the setback to move forward His plan, but each setback has a series of consequences that will bring about more suffering for the people involved in God's plan. That's why we, do, we should not never take it for granted that after all, God can move His plans forward. So, I'll just drag be a I'll just drag everybody down. We are called, first of all, to trust. To trust that God is in control. God is in control of history. God is in control of every thing that happens in the world. God is in control of our lives, each and every one of us. This trust should translate into fidelity. It's not just enough to, you know, to put everything in God's hands. We need to be faithful. And fidelity means that we have to be, to do things in accordance with His will, with His pleasure. Whatever pleases God, we have to do. Because that's the, that's what fidelity means. It's not just doing things um, because we are forced or obliged to do them. Fidelity means that we love what we are doing because we love the person for whom we are doing those things. And so, in fidelity, there is pleasure not in the sensual sense but in the sense of the union of hearts when i love what god loves and god loves what i love and that means immersing myself into the heart of god Sometimes we think of fidelity simply as not committing any sin. But that's a problem. Consciously, we may not have committed any sin, but there could be a lot of commissions and omissions, not necessarily sinful, but could be ways by which our hearts can grow cold. 
And there are many things that will make our hearts grow cold in relation to God. And when we allow that to happen, it compounds, it compounds. And we distance, we begin to distance ourselves from the things of God. And before we know it, we begin to hate the things that God loves. Before we know it, we begin to hate God Himself. Even if we have not committed any sin. Because there are some people who, who just do things because this is obli we are obliged to do these things, but I really hate this. I don't like this. But what can I do? I am left with no choice. And so, fidelity becomes drudgery, a burden. But this, there's no configuration of our heart to the heart of the Lord. And fidelity means, therefore, that we have to cooperate to cooperate with what God plans for us. And fidelity and cooperation means that even if others may not be cooperating very well, even if others may be falling away, I'm going to stay. I'm going to hold on to the ideal, the vision that God has set for me. Because while I do not allow myself to be a burden to God's plan, to the fruition of God's plan, I make myself, I make myself available to be an instrument of how God's plans may be fulfilled. No longer a burden, but an instrument of his plans coming to fulfillment to fruition and so dear brothers trust in God he cannot be outdone his plans cannot be undone it will take long but sometimes the length of time for God's plan to be realized is incumbent on the fidelity of each and every one. If so many are unfaithful, it will take time. But if many will cooperate and will make themselves available for the fulfillment of God's plan, then things can move forward. Because God is in a hurry. No, God, don't ever think that God is just waiting and allowing things to be, since after all, He's, in it, he's eternal. God is in a hurry. And if ever, if ever we see things to be seem to be very slow, it's not because God is just taking things lightly there are just too many who are dragging everybody down and so we lift ourselves up with God's grace so that we can be instruments of the, f the realization and the fulfillment of God's plan why does it take time because God does not force anybody. We human beings, we are not formed by the stick and carrot approach. If we are formed that way, we do not belong to a monastery or a seminary. We belong to the zoo down there. Look at the first reading. The brothers realized what they have done after a long time, a long time of gestation, and it took 
for Joseph to sacrifice to absorb all the evils that his brothers had done to him, but never giving up until such time when finally, finally, by God's plan, by God's design, the brothers came to realize the evil that they have done. And if you listen carefully to the reading, there's a very poignant moment when Joseph heard his brothers expressing recrimination to each other. We shouldn't have killed our brother. Look, we are, we are suffering now the consequences of our actions. He could understand what they were saying, but they didn't know that he could understand. And then Joseph went out. He couldn't bear it anymore. He wept. That's the heart of a person who trusts, who is faithful, who cooperates, no matter if everybody else is falling down or falling away. And that's the way forward for each and every one of us to trust, to be faithful, to cooperate.